Hello and welcome back to the channel where you join me for something hot off the press, a first look at the brand new Ferrari VGT9. This is Ferrari's Vision Gran Turismo car into their next road-going hypercar as well, the successor to the LaFerrari, if you will. It borrows the power plant from the likes of the 296 GTB, GTS, and GT3, and the 499P recently introduced Le Mans hypercar, but there's so much more to it. A single seat, canopy over the top, lots to take in. So let's explore what we know then about the VGT9, fresh off the press, having only just been revealed. Let's do this, the Ferrari Vision Gran Turismo. So much success in motorsports and so many amazing cars as well. But let's start with this car and what we're looking at. What a thing, Ferrari's Vision Gran Turismo. A car that is all about the aero. Still though, quite realistic in its concept, in its idea. The central seating position beneath the fighter jet style canopy, the cockpit if you will. The flat upper surface to the bodywork with the smooth curves over the arches for each of the wheels. But all the negative space below, all the openings for the aero, using learnings from different motorsport competitions, Formula One for example, everything that Ferrari takes part in and has seen great success over the years. This car however only weighs, get this, dry weight of 1,200 250 kilos more than one to one and that means acceleration times zero to 100 kilometers an hour 62 miles an hour in under two seconds seriously quick knocking an eighth of the time of the SF90 Stradale, which is a very, very, very fast machine. Now you only have to look at this to know that it's going to be a quick thing. In fact, there are some incredible design details, but still distinctly Ferrari. And by that, I don't only mean the Ferrari Scuderia shields that you see painted onto the bodywork, but even this new horizontal style rear tail light also found on the front headlights. But the rear actually reminds me quite a lot of the new Icona series Daytona, the Daytona SP3 with those horizontal lines paying tribute to some of Ferrari's cars from their history but through the back you can actually see everything going on within and that's all of course sitting beneath this spoiler mounted up out of the top of the rear deck to help with the downforce to give it as much downforce as possible to ultimately help it achieve the fastest possible lap times. As we head towards the interior the squared off steering wheel with the screen in the center the light bar that runs across the dashboard the transparent materials that you spot everywhere where lightweight materials, the clear seating position of the heels above the hips, but the same idea for the canopy that pivots up from the front up towards an open position where you can climb in from either side, slide on in, close it on down and get ready to go out and drive. That's not all though, it's the way the whole thing is presented and as you start to look at it a little bit more, you see the openings in the negative space, you see some of the knacker ducts found around the bodywork, but you see also some other ideas and smooth lines, that smooth, smooth upper surface, even over the teardrop cabin, the way it's so gradual with its movements to obviously help act like an aerofoil to give it the best aerodynamic performance with everything happening underneath, with everything underneath akin in a way to the Valkyrie. It feels quite Valkyrie-esque in my mind from that style of the bodywork over the top and all of the aero happening underneath. Futuristic, but like I said, also realistic. And I think that's where it might tie us on to what's coming next from Ferrari. I'm going to make a call here about the LaFerrari successor, which might be a bit controversial, so bear with me. If you've not thought about this before, it might be a shock to the system or not what you're expecting. So hold fire and let me explain all. But I've been thinking this for a couple of years, and in recent times, I've also been speaking about it with a few Ferrari VIP customers to get their input. Now, don't get me wrong, the Daytona is not a slow car, but performance, I don't think, was ever number one behind those products. Whereas the flagship, 
Bishop and LaFerrari's successor needs to be a demonstration of the future, a technology tour de force. And they've created this divergence between the petrol head purist angle and the technology. We all know that we need to head into the direction of the future. That means emissions, downsizing, electrification, hybridization, smaller engines, fewer cylinders, lower capacity, etc., etc. And that's where I think Ferrari are going. That's not all, though, because there are probably some design cues to take in from this as well. Of course, there are some elements that we see on existing models, the likes of the full straight horizontal lines from the back, like on the Daytona, those running lights up front, a little bit like the 499P race car, and plenty of other things around. But Ferrari have a remarkable knack of refreshing their design language every five or ten years. I suspect in these pictures that we're looking at, there are elements that we don't yet know, but we'll see on future cars that Flavio and his team are designing, but bringing into this as a bit of a teaser for what's to come. Whether that's the shape of the wheel arches, whether that's that strong horizontal line running along the side of the car, perhaps some of the angles that you have up front, the shape of the nose, the shape of the lower splitter, those lines that you have going over the arches or the wing, or perhaps even some of the interior details. But one thing I do know is that we have absolutely no idea what it's going to be called. Ferrari's naming system seems to be very, very random and very, very hard to guess. No doubt though, when they do release the next hypercar, the next LaFerrari successor, or the first LaFerrari successor I should say, it's going to be a remarkable piece of engineering and I can't wait for it. That's it for now though. Thank you very much for watching guys. I'll see you again very soon.